Welcome back. Pretoria was painted blue this past weekend as the Democratic Alliance launched its manifesto. The main opposition party has promised to revive the economy. That's as it aims to create 2 million jobs and enforce fiscal rules, which would stabilize South Africa's debt. And joining me as we take a closer look at what the business community made of this manifesto is the CEO of Business Unity for South Africa, Cass Kavadia. Thank you so much uh, for your time, Cass. Now, the DA outlined seven priorities that would guide its decision-making in government. Uh, is this a perfect picture at face value, at least? Well, look, I, I think the seven priorities that the DA outlines uh, essentially a rendition, I guess, of the problems we have in the country. Uh, we need to create jobs. We need to end load shedding and water shedding. Mm. We need to deal with violent crime. We need to deal with corruption. Uh, we need to deal with poverty, uh, education, mm. and health care. Uh, these are all critical issues that need to be dealt with, and one can have no argument that these are the issues that the DA is targeting and there are the correct issues to target. I mean, I would add things like uh, logistics to that, for instance, mm. uh, uh, which is also very important. But the, the issue here, and, and look, we're in sort of manifesto mode yeah. and campaigning mode, but the issue here is with the DA as with any other political party, is certainly from a business point of view, we believe that given where South Africa is, given the depth and breadth of our crises, no government is going to be able to sort this out on its own. And there needs to be, and I can only speak for business, so I can't mm. speak for other constituency, but yeah. certainly from a business point of view, there needs to be a partnership between business and government. And if the DA in implementing its priorities is open to that then that's what we'd like to see in any political party yeah our sort of criteria for any political party coming into power or any coalition coming into power is identify the critical issues have a immediate term plan to actually make critical interventions to steady the ship and then look at how we work certainly between business and government to see how we adequately resource what needs to be resourced, govern those resources properly, and and come up with a clear plan on how we, in the medium to long term, deal with these issues. So that that would be very broadly our view on this. I think the mm. partnership we currently have with government on logistics, on crime and corruption, on energy, is beginning to show fruit it's slow but sure progress but we believe that if we have those sorts of partnerships we can actually begin to address some of the crises that the da identifies yeah uh, indeed yeah you bring a very uh, interesting point there uh talking about you know the depth and the breadth of our issues uh, the da said it says its plan is to rescue south africa and obviously the main question is is south africa rescuable to that degree that the da outlines of course they are they would be inheriting a rather shaky economy uh, in the manifesto the da uh, put in a proposal for youth uh, employment uh, saying that they'd create the youth employment opportunity opportunity certificate uh, and that they would be scrapping the minimum wage. I don't know how that would go down with the people that would be employed, but would this go down well with business? Well, look, business sign on to the minimum wage agreement. I think, again, speaking very broadly, because I don't want to go into yeah. specific the political party, but speaking very broadly, I mean, our constitution protects the rights of workers and protects the rights of businesses to do responsible business and that's what should be the guiding light so so we should have legislation within the context of our situation so you can't have labor legislation in our view in a in south africa that you'd have in a country that let's say has a five percent unemployment rate we have a 45% unemployment rate. Our priority has got to be to get as many people into decent jobs as possible. There must be 
checks and balances in place to ensure that businesses do not exploit workers and 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 treat workers badly mm. but at the same time we cannot set wages at the level particularly in an economy that's not growing in at the level that will actually disincentivize employers from employing people yeah so 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 you know we can talk about a minimum wage we can talk about those sorts of terms the, at the end of the day we've got to find a balance between uh, uh, treating workers properly and 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 ensuring we pay a, a reasonable wage and creating as many jobs as possible yeah and that's got to be there I mean, the DA said a lot about uh, involving uh, the private sector and making the environment more competitive, particularly when it comes to uh, electricity. Um, and I'm wondering if uh, the DA went far enough in uh, addressing uh, the needs of business um, if it were to be a governing party, for example, red tape and the like. Yeah, so, so we welcome, again, any political party saying that they'd want to open up space for the private sector to play a bigger role. Mm. Uh, that's so, so if you look at the current energy situation, in the last year or so, the private sector has generated close to 5,000 megawatts of energy. And that's because a regulatory environment was created for the private sector to do so. Similarly, going forward, if a regulatory environment is created and government or any political party has a mindset that says that government needs to enable the private sector to actually manage a lot of the logistics that need to be managed, manage some of the, uh, you know, uh, generate as much energy as we can in the private sector, Mm. Uh, look at how the private sector can get involved through their project management skills and funding in 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 significant infrastructure projects, and has that sort of mindset, and creates a regulatory environment that say the private sector aren't social organisations. Yeah, they are businesses that have shareholders. They invest and they need a return on that investment, and and if we can structure things in that way and have that mindset. We think that we can, we can, we can release the energies of the private sector and what they're good at, and and allow those energies to work within the context of a regulatory framework that government should put into place to ensure that there are checks and balances to avoid bad practices, to avoid rent seeking, mm. that businesses are doing business in a responsible way that they are treating workers properly and government is getting bang for buck as well from yeah. from those initiatives ah, right. and and, it, and that's the sort of environment we need ah, all right well thank you so much for your insights today Kaz. really appreciated just outlining uh, some of the reactions that we have gotten from a business on the da's manifesto that was the ceo of busa cas